Hey traders, are you reading candlestick charts correctly? That's a question you have to ask yourself and it could be directly contributing to your ability to profitably trade in any market. So in today's video we're going to be talking about the anatomy of a candlestick and later on in the video we'll even be diving into how these candlestick charts can help us to determine and predict market direction. So if that all sounds interesting to you then make sure to click that like button for more videos like this. Go ahead and click that subscribe button while the intro and disclaimer roll to be alerted when we come out with other content and I'll see you guys on the other side. All right, traders, so we're going to go ahead and quickly go over the anatomy of the candlestick and then directly after that we'll talk more about what it actually represents and how we can use these candlestick charts to determine market direction. So let's go ahead and talk about the candlestick that you see on your screen. Each candlestick is going to have four main points. Your main points are going to be the open of the candle, the close of the candle, the high of the candle, and the low of the candle. The open and close will be determined by the top and the bottom of the actual body of the candlestick. The body of the candlestick is this green area you see here, and green represents a bullish candle or a candle that closed above where it opened. So this candle had a starting point, and as soon as the hour, day, or weekly candlestick that you're looking at started, as soon as that candle starts, that is considered the open. And we'll talk more about time frames in just a second, but that's considered the open of the candle. Now what happens after the open is shown by the shadows or the wicks, which are these black lines here, and by the close of the candle. The shadows and the wicks represent where price action went. So in this case, we would have had a candle that started here at the open, pushed down to the low, then back up, and then passed our close to the high of the candle, creating that wick, and then back down and closing at the end of whatever time frame you're looking at to create the close of the candlestick. So for this example, let's pretend that this is a daily chart. So the beginning of the day, this market would have opened here at the open. Price action would have moved down to the low, up to the high, and then back down at the end of the day to close right here at our close. And this is an example of the anatomy of a bullish candlestick. Now we'll quickly go over a bearish candlestick as well. Now as you may have noticed, these two are very similar. The only difference in a red or bearish candlestick is the fact that the close was below the open. So here we have the open. And again, we'll use this as a daily candle, just for example purposes. So the beginning of the day, we have an open here. And this candle would have opened there, pushed up to a high of the candlestick, pushed all the way down to the low, creating that bottom wick, and then closed at the end of the day, right at our close. And since we have a close that is below our open, then this candle represents a bearish day. So that time frame was a daily time frame, so that would represent a day where markets fell off, a day where markets closed below where they opened. And that would represent weakness in a market. So that was a quick run through of the anatomy of a candlestick. Again, the high represents the highest point price action got during this specific time frame. For this example, we were using a daily time frame, so this would be the highest point the market got to in that daily time period after the open which was here and this would be the lowest point price action got during that daily time period until it pushed back up and came here for the close for a bearish candle the close will always be below the open or on the bottom of the body of the candle and for a bullish candle the close will always be on top of the body or above the open of the candle all right so now that we've quickly been over the anatomy of a candlestick let's jump into what these candlesticks actually represent and then later on, we'll discuss how we can use candlestick charts to predict market direction. All right, guys, so let's dive into what these candlesticks actually represent. Well, each one of these candlesticks represents a specific time period. If I click over here on time periods, you can see that we have time periods ranging from one minute all the way to one month. So with that being the case, if we were to click the one minute chart, then each candlestick would represent one minute or 60 seconds of price action. We would have the open of a candlestick every 60 seconds on that one minute candlestick chart. We would have price fluctuating within those 60 seconds down to the low, up to the high, and then we would also have a close of a candle every 60 seconds. So each one of these candlesticks would represent 60 seconds on a one minute chart. And if we were on a one month chart, if we go all the way to the other end of the spectrum, 
then the same rules apply. If we were on a one month chart, if we were to click this one month chart here, then each candlestick on that chart would represent four weeks of price action. We would have an open at the beginning of the four weeks. We would have price action in between the four weeks going to the low and the high of the wick or the shadows of the candles and that's what would represent where price action's been. And then we would have a close of the candle at the end of four weeks. All of this is represented by one candlestick depending on the time frame you're on. So currently we're on a one week chart. That means that when we scroll down the chart here, each one of these candlesticks represent a full week of price action. For the green candlesticks, we have a full week of price action that started at the open or the bottom of the green candle. We have price action in between represented by these wicks coming down to the low and moving up to the high. And then at the end of the week, we have the close of the candle. So that represents a bullish week in price action for our current pair. Currently we are on the pound Aussie. So for this pair, during this full week of price action, we had a bullish week represented by this candle. Now the same thing applies for a bearish week and I'll go through that really quickly. So for this case, we have an open at the top of the body is where this market opened. We have where price has been represented by the wicks, the high and the low of the red candle and the close of the candle at the end of the week at the bottom of that body. So that would represent a bearish week of price action. And again, guys, these same rules apply no matter what time frame we're on. And this can go anywhere from a one minute chart all the way up to a one month chart. So each one of these candlesticks represents a certain period of time. And once we start putting these candlesticks together, it's when we can start determining market direction based on candlestick charts. So that's what we're going to dive into now. So combining all of these candlesticks together is how we can start to actually determine market direction and determine trend and also determine structure levels such as support and resistance. And these are going to all be foundational parts of success in any trading career on any market. Understanding how to read a candlestick chart is the foundation of any good trading strategy. All right, so we have a starting point down here, correct? This market pushed up from this level with a nice impulsive move, indicating a lot of buyers coming in from that direction. Now, what we're looking for next is to see if that level is broken. So we have a high. And when I say high this time, I'm not talking about the high of a single candlestick. I'm talking about the high that's represented by the combination of candlesticks throughout this impulsive move up, which was right here. The high is what's created before the pullback. So this pullback represents people selling from the market, a combination of people selling. And the reason they're selling can be because of many different factors. Some people that were in down here at this level that we started from are now just taking profit. Other people may be jumping in based on some type of fundamental news release or based on some type of technical analysis. But all of that is really irrelevant information because all we wanna do is look at the chart and understand what it's doing. So once we've created that high, we're looking for a pullback and then the creation of a new high. This three point move is how we can start to determine market direction. Once we have this three point move, a low to a high, to a pullback or high or low, to a new high, once that's created, then we can determine that the market direction is currently up. The market direction is bullish. And with that being the case, we have the ability to restrict ourselves to only bullish trades, to only long trades, and this can really be beneficial to a trading strategy. Now, what are we looking for after this three point move? And this is where a lot of traders get confused. Well, we're looking for this uptrend to continue before the break of our support level. This is our support level. So before this support level gets broken, we expect the market to come up and break above this resistance level and continue our uptrend. And that's exactly what we get. Here we have this pullback again, selling pressure from taking profit, from traders taking positions based on fundamental news events and traders taking positions based on technical analysis. And then we have another push up, continuing our uptrend because we've now broken above our previous high. And since we have a break above our previous high into a new high, what are we expecting? We're expecting another new high and we're expecting it before the break of this support level right here. Now, some main places that we can expect this market to turn around while in this uptrend are our previous points of resistance, which would be represented by this and this, 
that's a spot where the market is likely to continue its trend to the upside or we could look at other support and resistance levels through this zone as likely zones for the market to continue its trend other examples of that would be right in here because that level has acted as resistance before and even this lower level represented by our blue line any of those levels are highly likely places for the market to continue in its uptrend or in its current trend which for the moment on the pound Aussie here is up so we're going to continue determining market direction like this and guys it's important to remember that no matter how you're determining market direction it's never going to be 100 percent accurate but doing this and creating rules for determining trend is going to keep you consistent when it comes to placing trades and that's what's very very important when trading in any market so now we have this pullback yet again a high a pullback and what do we get a new high the market's going into a new high now we'll wait on that pullback there we go we start we're starting to have a pullback now so we'll draw our line yet again and what are we waiting for at this point well we're waiting for the market to break above this high before we break below this lower support level right here let's see what we get market pushing down pushing down okay now look on this edge of the screen and you can see that we have a break and close below that support level so let's use those same rules and let's determine trend based on this candlestick chart based on this candlestick chart we've now created a reversal we've now broken the structure support level that we were looking at before since we've done that we expect this market to trade lower now instead of higher so now our bullish direction bias our long bias is gone completely we're no longer looking for this market to head higher than our previous level we're now waiting for a pullback and a break below the newly created support level which is going to be right here so now that we have this newly created support level and we're starting on this pullback we're gonna be waiting for the market to give us a reason to go short and then we're waiting for a break and close below this previous support level so this is how you can determine market direction using these candlestick charts guys pointing out these highs and lows and waiting for the market to tell you whether or not it's going to be supported by that support level or continue in that current trend or if it's going to reverse like what we just saw and guys there's no need for an indicator on the chart for me to know this information I don't need moving averages I don't need an RSI indicator to tell me that this market wanted to reverse right there I've determined that information based solely on these candlestick charts and I'm showing you guys how to do the same exact thing so now that we've created this downtrend remember we talked about this at the beginning of this section of the video we're waiting on this one two three move we have a low a lower high and then a lower low created this is telling us now we're in a downtrend now we can expect this market to continue in this downward direction let's see what happens well, we get this small pullback and then we do continue in the downward direction right there so we got that small pullback continuation down another pullback and another continuation down and now we're still continuing this trend and expecting this market to create lower lows so if we continue taking a look at this market as you can see we're dropping down now and now beginning to rally still in this trend guys I, I want to make sure I make that a clear point I'll go ahead and take this line off so it doesn't get confusing until the market breaks this level of resistance right here I am considering this market in a downtrend these are just the rules that I've created to personally identify trend so we have this pullback again pushing up towards our resistance level but not breaking it so still we're in this downtrend and now we're pushing even lower and here we are at current day and currently this markets pushed up so right now guys we're just in this period of consolidation on the pound Aussie we're looking at this area in through here as our consolidation area now on this specific time frame because of this consolidation we see that doesn't mean that I'm gonna be looking for a bearish trade when I see markets that look like this I just avoid them altogether until the market shows me what it, what it wants to do until the market shows me it's going to continue this downtrend by breaking the low then after the market shows me what it wants to do I'll look for my next opportunity to go short or another possibility is that this market pushes up and breaks above our resistance level and in that case I'll be looking for a new long opportunity so when markets start to consolidate like this I just wait for the market to tell me what direction it wants to go another thing that's very important and can be very beneficial to trading strategies and guys I am considering producing a video 
that will explain multiple time frame analysis and which time frames you should pay the most attention to when it comes to structure levels and trend. And what I'm going to do is when this video gets 500 likes, that's when I'll produce the multiple time frame video because I want to make sure there's enough people that are interested in that topic before I do so. So if you're interested in learning more about multiple time frame analysis and which time frames are most beneficial for determining trend and for structure levels, then make sure to go ahead and click that like button for me. Subscribe here to the trading channel if you're new and you found this to be interesting. I do have a completely free course explaining trend identification and structure levels in a lot more detail than I went into here on this video. If you're interested in receiving that, then I send it out to everyone subscribed to the email list at the trading channel. So you can click the link in the description below labeled free training. Here at the trading channel, we also offer an intensive training course called the EAP training program. And if you'd like to learn more about that program, then there is a link in the description for that as well. I hope you guys trade green. I hope you have a great rest of your day and rest of your week. If you have any questions for me, leave them in the comments section below and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.